Hey, this is Rob, founder of Coifin. I wanted to tell you about a new function we just released called Percentile Rank Snapshot. This snapshot allows you to gain context into a stock's fundamentals or valuation relative to its history and versus a cohort like a sector or other stocks in a country. It quickly allows you to see how a stock ranks on different key metrics. Let me show you how it works. So the percentile rank data can be found in several places. The first place is under snapshots. We have a snapshot called percentile rank. So here we have a bunch of information. So valuation multiples, uh, um, valuation yields, margins, leverage, and the Altman Z-score. Um, you also have the performance on another tab. And the way to interpret this table is for each of these metrics, you have the current value. So if we're looking at Apple, the current value on for PE on a forward basis is 28 times. And versus the 20 year history, that's that 20 times is trading at the 73rd percentile versus its 20 year range. If I change that to the 10 year range, it's trading at the 90th percentile. So this gives you a quick view of where today's value is relative to the 10 year range. And then we also show you the percentile rank versus its peers and the way we define peers is versus the sector. So Apple on a P basis is trading at the 60th percentile. So a little bit more in the middle or um, kind of the median value relative to its peers in the sector. And then versus the US or all the stocks in the US, it's trading in the 80th percentile. If you look at a company like Google, and I change Google here, that gives you a slightly different profile of where the valuations are. So Google just on a relative basis versus its history is trading sort of in the middle and looks cheap on a price to sales basis and um, on, on some other metrics on price to book and tangible book, which isn't really val valid or uh, valuable for a tech company. It's trading on a little bit higher multiple. And then you can see here where it's trading relative to the communication services sector and where it's trading versus all the stocks in the US. So this is a, a really fast way to gain context into how, how these metrics look versus its history and versus its peers. You can also see the performance here for uh, percentile ranks and we, on, we only have it versus its peers. We don't have it versus its history because this is already a historical performance. So for example, uh, the 10 year performance of Google or the price change of Google is, is 440%. That's at the 95th, 91st percentile versus communication services and 93rd percentile versus the US. And just to show you kind of how to uh, also interpret percentile ranks versus some other functions on Coifin. So if I look at the PE ratio and I think about uh, a P of 22.1, I could also go to the graph function here. And if I graph Google here and I graph the PE and TM, the um, the NTMPE of Google um, again is is 22.1 times just like we saw before, and looking at this graph, you could sort of see it's trading in the middle of its of its historical range. So this kind of value, if I were to eyeball it, um, the number of points above and the number of points below are about equal. If I change this to Apple, um, and I look at the PE ratio for Apple here, kind of same thing, and I pull up the next 12 months. Similarly, if I look at the 10 year range, um, that's trading near the high end of the range, just like we saw. So there's only been kind of like these points in history where Apple's traded at a higher PE and all the other times it's traded at a lower PE. So that means the P is elevated relative to history. So going back to the snapshot, again, it's, it's just a, a very quick bird's eye view to give you a perspective on where these multiples, where these yields uh, are trading. These numbers, by the way, are red uh, because they're in the top quintile. So if it's 80 or above, they're going to be red for valuation, uh, meaning that's kind of like the danger zone. If they're 20 or below, they'll be green. And that's flipped for yields because when yields are low, that's kind of danger zone or that's probably worse than if, if yields are high, all else equal. But you could see the debt, but, uh, the debt payback yield for Apple is high relative to history. Um, and then on a uh, percentile rank basis versus the tech sector, 
it has really attractive margins and profitability, which probably explains why it's trading at, at such a high multiple. And um, the other thing to mention is a high percentile rank doesn't mean that it's bad um, necessarily. All it means is that the valuation is elevated. So um, it's a similar concept to a PE ratio being high. Uh, PE ratios being high necessar aren't necessarily bad. Um, for example, NVIDIA, if we look at NVIDIA, it's trading at the uh, 99th or 100th percentile for all these things. But the stock has been doing really well um, because of all the tailwinds that are associated with its core business of, of providing GPUs for AI processing. Um, and so this doesn't mean that the stock is going to go down or that the stock is bad, but it gives you a perspective of how expensive a stock is versus its history and versus its peers um, really quickly in a bird's eye view. Um, and you could also kind of see how that looks on a um, on a profitability or, or leverage or some of these other metrics. The other way to interpret kind of percentile ranks versus the sector versus the country is you can always look at the market scatter plot. So if I looked at the market scatter plot here, uh, which which basically uh, has a distribution uh, X Y distribution, and I put in P E and uh, I looked at the P E N T M. This is um, a way to see that. So if I select the um, S&P 500 here, um, this is the distribution of the S&P 500. And you can see Nvidia here is uh, trading at 69 times. And um, if I think about kind of like this distribution horizontally, it's trading at the 90th plus percentile or whatever that value exact value is. But I could get to the same conclusion by looking at the scatter plot. The percentile rank kind of quantifies that distribution much more quickly. Um, but you could also see how that distribution looks uh, versus, for example, the um, the uh, um, S&P 500. Or if you wanted to look at the XLC here, which is the communication sector, um, that would give you a similar perspective. I think. Uh, um, uh, uh, NVIDIA is not in the communication sector. We were looking at Google before. Um, and then Google here is, is sort of in the middle, um, maybe a little bit more elevated um, relative to some of the other consumer stocks on a, on a P basis. But this is another way to, um, to see the percentile rank and to understand kind of like where the distributions are um, relative to the sector or, or the country. Um, also in the market scatter plot, you can also uh, now choose the percentile rank values. For example, I can look at valuation on a PE basis here on price to earnings, uh, NTM, um, and look at the, um, let's say the, the 20 year historical rank. So this is gonna be the country rank, the sector in the country, the regional rank, the sector in the region, the global rank, and the sector in the, in the global distribution. And this is the 10 year and 20 year rank. So the 20, if I uh, plot the 20 year rank here, um, this is an interesting analysis because what this tells you is this is the actual PE level and then this is the rank of the PE versus its 20 year um, history. So even though Netflix is trading at 30 times, it's actually trading at a lower um, percentile rank versus its history than it has before. Um, so this gives you a little bit more context into where stock trades relative to its history in addition to providing you with the absolute value. And again, you could change this for, let's say the S&P 500 would give you a, uh, a different analysis. Um, and, and this gives you a little bit of a kind of a better idea of even though the absolute values of P could be high, um, this tells you kind of like where they're trading uh, relative to history. You can also see the percentile rank values in the watch list. So the watch list has percentile rank functions as well. So I have my watch list here and I could choose my columns and my columns here could be um, uh, uh, percentile rank valuation. So I'll just find price to uh, price to earnings, NTM. And again, I could look at the uh, 20 year history or I could look at the country rank um, and that would show up as a column here. And now I know for each of these values, if I have, um, if I have PE here, which I don't, but if I add PE, I can now see the percentile rank of each company. So Apple, the 20 year PE percentile rank is 73. The country percentile rank is 80. Um, and I could sort by 
these columns and, and understand pretty quickly kind of where things lay in terms of their uh, percentile rank functions. And then the last place that you can look at percentile ranks is in the screening tool. Um, so in the screening tool, you can create a new screen and use percentile rank functionality. So here, um, let me just look at um, not description. Let me just look at the US stock. So I'm just gonna go to country, US, and look at US stocks. Um, there's uh, four, uh, a little over 4,000. Let me look at uh, ones over 10 billion. And now I'm gonna add a criteria here where I wanna look at percentile rank and then we're gonna look at valuation. And again, I wanna look at PE, NTM, uh, 20 year score that's in the, uh, let's say 10th or lower percentile. So I'm gonna put 10 as my max here. And I have 109 matches for um, for stocks that are in the that are um, in with a market cap above ten billion dollars in the U.S., where their percentile rank for PE over the past twenty years is ten. Let me see what those stocks are. Um, and these are the stocks. And I could add a column here called PE just to get the absolute value of PE. Um, and this gives me kind of like a, then a sense. So. Tesla here is trading at the ninth percentile relative to history on P basis at 48 times. Um, I don't think Tesla has a lot of earnings historically, so the data probably is a little bit, um, um, probably a little bit limited. But something like a uh, like a Bank of America trading in the seventh percentile 8.8 times. If I were to click on Bank of America and load it, and again open up the PE. I should be able to see that same analysis. And lo and behold, if I look at 20 years, uh, that PE value and outside the spike, so let me just zoom in here to get rid of that spike, that PE value is, is, is trading at the lowest level or close to the lowest level it's ever traded. So really quick way to find um, these stocks trading at extremes and filter for um, these interesting criteria. Um, I hope that's um, going to be helpful to your process to incorporate percentile ranks into your workflow. Uh, please reach out to us if you have any questions. Thank you.